Hi guys, Bolt here and welcome to a Steel Division 2 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at some of the very important options that you should be checking out and adjust to your gameplay style. So in the gameplay tab, in the options menu, there's a few interesting ones here. First of all, we have the automatic fire on enemy supplies. Currently I have set this to yes after actually going through this myself. Now if you have it on no and you spot an enemy supply truck, you won't fire at it. And that supply truck might be going to either enemy tanks or enemy artillery to resupply and or repair these. So you want to actually make sure to put these on yes, unless you do plan on taking over enemy supplies, but most of the time, the enemy supplies will be away from the front line and won't be even near your unit. So it is uh, definitely outweighs the um, potential benefits of capturing a supply by just putting this to yes. A second option here that is really important is the automatic Winchester evacuation. And Winchester evacuation basically means that if the if a unit, let's say a, a fighter bomber, right? If it has dropped all of its payload, if you've ordered it to bomb, an, bomb a position, it'll evacuate after that. If you have this on yes, that is. If you have it on no, it will stick around if it has other primary weapons, such as a machine gun or a cannon or an auto cannon or you name it. So the newest added mechanism to the Steel Division series is the precision shot. So if you have an anti-tank gun, if you put it on precision shot, it will not fire until the accuracy and the chance of penetration is above the set threshold right here. Right now, this is at 40% here. Um, there is no number at the moment, but uh, it's, it's actually at exactly 40% right now. Now, if you want to adjust this, you can put it to like 70% or 80% or just a full 100%, which will change the moment like an AT gun or a tank will actually open fire. Now this does actually not affect the return fire of a unit. If you have a tank that is on precision shot or if you have an RDP that is on precision shot and if it gets fired at it will return fire even if the accuracy and penetration is below the threshold that you have set up here. So next, I want to go over the interface here. There's a, really, there's a few really interesting and important ones to go over. First of all, if you're a diehard RTS player, you might want to change the icon types from RTS to NATO. Now, since I have been playing with RTS for a really long time, and it also helps some of the newer RTS people out there, just kept it at the RTS symbols. It's easier for me and easier for any newcomers. The next thing here is label aggregation. So if you're in deployment phase, for example, or if you're on the battlefield and you zoom out, labels will basically be combined to keep the battlefield a little bit cleaner. If you have this on no, each label will be kept like apart. It'll, it'll, it'll be separated from all other labels. The tactical HUD size, changing this will change the size of the HUD. So you might want to play with this. And for, for example, if you have a really high resolution screen, I would recommend putting this on a slightly higher setting. Um, if you're just playing on regular 1080p, Normal is fine. I play it on 1440p and normal for me seems fine, but I might do some might do some tinkering here very soon. Now these do speak for themselves. Another one that I want to be talking about is a very important one that will make your life a lot easier, which is the requisition menu. Now, if you're in the deployment phase, the default setting is keep open during deployment, which basically means that the menu will stick open or stay open until the game starts. So you can just you know, select units and deploy them without the menu actually closing in on itself. What I have here is always keep open. And this basically means if I click on the infantry tab and put down infantry units, this menu will stay open until I actually click the infantry tab again to close it. Now, a lot of you might not be liking the front line. Um, if you're a war game player or if you just don't like the front line in general, what you can do is put the display of the front line to none. This basically means that it will limit the amount of colors shown or amount of front line shown. And this will basically limit that to a single line, um, as it should be in my opinion. Another one is the 3D unit scaling. Now if you are, think the units are hard to see on the battlefield, you might want to put the unit scaling on either large or, or normal. I wouldn't go to... I, do, I just don't recommend going to none, since small is kind of like the sweet spot. It, it's just barely bumps up the unit sizes but it's it's like you can almost not tell um, but if you're like zoomed out all the way it does make it a little bit nicer uh, to have some uh, slightly bigger um, units now the icon type for the strategic icon type here same story you can go for either RTS or NATO um, not much difference here with the tactical icon type 
But um, if you do want to go die hard, I would recommend going for NATO. Otherwise, um, just keep it on RTS. So since I want to keep these tutorials like bite-sized chunks, I will end it here. In the next one, I will be talking about all of the hotkeys that I frequently use. Now, if you want to really get better at a game like this in a really fast-paced RTS game, I really recommend ditching that bottom right menu when you're in a game and going for only hotkeys. I've tried training myself like back in uh, war game airland battle and it has really really helped my both my micro and my speed and my reaction speeds in games such as this um, i will be going over all of these and i will be giving all of my tips and tricks on how to make your gameplay a lot better and how to basically overwhelm the enemy by simply using hotkeys but um, that was it i hope some of these interface and gameplay options will help you out um, Obviously, if you are well known with this kind of game, um, this will be pretty much useless for you. But uh, for the newcomers here, some of these might have helped you out. So uh, give that a go and I'll see you guys back in the next video. So take care.